Kia ora koutou. Um, thanks for all the feedback about my video yesterday. Glad so many other people found it really interesting. And um, I was really surprised how many people... Um, maybe I'm not the only health nerd in the world. <laughs> um, how many people found it really fascinating as well. So today... Um, I noticed yesterday's video was like 8 minutes and I'm really sorry because I thought it was going to be um, short. So today, I promise, I'll try my best to keep it under 5 minutes because I know you guys are busy. So um, today I want to talk about just what is SIBO. Really simple um, description of what it is so you understand um, kind of what it's all about. Um, but first, um, I've already had quite a few inquiries from people who are interested in already doing the SIBO test. So I'm going to go ahead and um, order some test kits um, in the next couple of days. They cost $200 each. Um, so if you want me to order one for you, I'll just get in touch as soon as you can, today if possible, um, or early tomorrow. I'll give you my bank account number and you can um, put the $200 through for the test kit. I'll order the kit for you. And um, if you want to discuss how it all works and everything first, just send me a message. But yeah, I'll order the kit for you and I should have them hopefully by the end of the week if anyone else wants to give it a try. And I'm happy to work with you um, with the treatments and things at a discounted rate because I'm still learning myself how to treat SIBO. So just get in touch with me by messenger um, as soon as you can if you do want to order one. Um, okay, so we'll just get into what is SIBO. So uh, let me see, I'm reading my notes. <laughs> um, SIBO is a digestive tract issue. So um, digestion in Western medicine starts in the mouth. What it starts when you eat food, you chew it up, enzymes go in from your saliva, start digesting the food, um, you swallow it, it goes down into your stomach. Um, in Eastern medicine, like Ayurvedic medicine, which I'm trained in, um, digestion actually starts before it goes into your mouth, it starts with the senses, but that's a whole other video which is quite interesting, so um, I'll, I'll do a video on that one day as well. Um, so now firstly for about digestion. So I've got a little um, book here with a diagram. Let's see if I can show you if I can work out how to do this. Okay. So can you see that? Okay, here we go. So we've got uh, the stomach here. So after you swallow the food, it comes down the esophagus, it comes into your stomach. The stomach is a highly acid environment. Um, it's mostly sterile, so not, not too many bugs in there at all. Um, once, you, once your food is finished churning around in the stomach, it goes down into the small intestine, which is around here. All these wiggly bits in the middle, that's the small intestine. And... Um, when your food's in the small intestine, it's um, digested more by acid. Um, sorry, enzymes. There's a little bit more bacteria in the small intestine, but not a lot still. Still quite a low concentration of bacteria in the small intestine in, in, in a healthy person. So after it's finished in the small intestine, which is quite a long process, it ends up in this large intestine, which comes around here like this, and comes out down the end. I'm sure we know where it all ends up. So in this large intestine, this is where there's a huge concentration of bacteria. Um, so this is where gas is produced, and that's a natural process of digestion. It's a natural um, byproduct of bacteria. While the bacteria are breaking down the food and doing all the things they do with the food, it produces gas. It also produces vitamins and fatty acids, which is fats basically. Um, so that is just like a really, really brief description of what happens in the colon and the large intestine. Um, so with SIBO, a little bit of a different thing happens. Uh, so in SIBO, people start to get bacteria, large amounts of bacteria in the small intestine, in some cases even in the stomach. And this is really unnatural. It's not meant to happen in a normal healthy state. So it causes a lot of the symptoms. So when um, 
as you can see, if you've got back um, gas formation naturally occurring in this part of the digestive tract when you're eating food because of the bacteria, if the bacteria start to migrate into the small intestine or the stomach, you're going to get gas production in those organs as well, and that is not natural, and that is um, one of the main effects of SIBO. So I'm just going to turn back around, turn the camera back around. Okay, so I'll talk about um, what happens. So um, the gases that are produced in SIBO are methane and hydrogen. If you have a lot of methane gas, you'll be able to smell it. Um, probably a lot of people who know you will know that you um, release methane gas. If you have hydrogen, it's, it's not detectable um, by your nose. Uh, so when we do a SIBO test, we're testing to see whether you have hydrogen or methane, or both. You can have both as well. And we'll find out which part of the small intest, uh, which part of the digestive tract it's in. So we'll find out if it's in the stomach, if it's in the small intestine, or if you don't have SIBO, we'll see that the gases are only in your large intestine, which is which will be great. But if we find um, gas in other parts of the digestive tract. That's when we know you've got SIBO and that's when we can help to treat it. So um, some of the things that happen when you get the gas formation, apart from the obvious, which is bloating and flatulence and burping, those are real obvious side effects of having the um, high gas production in your digestive tract. But there's quite a lot of other things that the gas does. Um, for example, the gas causes a lot of pain and it, it does cause pain in the stomach area. Um, from the stretching of the stomach um, and it causes you to have a huge bloated tummy sometimes um, but it also causes pain throughout the body and this is kind of a new thing that people didn't know until recently it can cause joint pain um, inflammatory type pain and this is why um, fibromyalgia patients who in case you don't know fibromyalgia is kind of a really painful body and it just comes on of no apparent reason and they've discovered now that um, all fibromyalgia patients respond um, to SIBO treatment, which means the pain is caused by the hydrogen gas in their body, and it's not actually some strange thing that nobody understands. Like we now understand that the pain is actually caused by the gas, so it's really cool to know that because we can treat it and we can help people. Um, so I'm just going to have another look at my notes. What else do I need to tell you about? So um, apart from um, the gas formation, there's a few other things that happen when you've got SIBO. So uh, on my list it says inflammation, I've already mentioned that, um, flattening of the villi, villi are like little fingers inside your intestines that help to help with the digestive process and they get flat and that happens in celiac disease. It also happens in SIBO and sometimes when they've diagnosed people with celiac disease because they have flattened villi, they actually have SIBO. There have been cases where people with celiacs um, diagnosed have been um, treated for SIBO and had the celiac disease reversed, so it wasn't actually celiac disease at all, which is really interesting. Um, another thing that happens is high toxin levels in the body because there's so many more bacteria, so much more bacterial toxins. Um, Ulcers from the irritation, ammonia gas is released, you can get diarrhea constipation, I talked about that yesterday, leaky gut, um, which is from the damage to the intestines, um, you get low enzymes, low pH in your stomach as well, or fluctuating pH, some people have heartburn and reflux, um, and so it also causes poor digestion too, which just adds to the list of things that it causes, food allergies and all that, food sensitivities and all those things that we talked about yesterday. Um, it also causes, the gas causes brain fog, um, where you just feel fuzzy in the head, and it causes acidity in the body. So the blood has to fight to um, try and keep itself at its... 5.5 roughly um, pH level because your your body is actually really acidic so it's constantly fighting trying to find minerals to bring that acidity level back down to 5.5 oh, up to 5.5 actually 
Um, so some of the things that cause, I'm just going to finish with some of the things that cause us to have this high bacteria in the wrong part of our digestive tract is um, scar tissue. That's one of the things. So if you've had any kind of injuries, accidents, radiation, surgeries, bits removed from um, down in your abdomen, you're going to have scar tissue and what we call adhesions, um, which pulls and causes like areas where um, things don't flow properly basically through your intestines. Uh, also low pH in your stomach, so oh, wrong pH in your stomach, so your stomach isn't digesting things properly, bacteria can grow in there. Um, poor bile flow can cause it. Um, a lot of things can cause backwash from the bowel up, so contents of the bowel start to wash upwards and that brings the bacteria up. Um, that can be caused by valve problems. There's an ileocecal valve which can be faulty or can be damaged or can be removed and that causes backwash, brings the bacteria up. Um, antibiotics and actually quite a few other drugs, even ones that you wouldn't think, like ones that are for serotonin which is for depression, those can cause the bacteria to proliferate. Um, Poor muscle movement throughout the digestive tract, so your digestive tract is meant to move, squeeze kind of down, 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 down. But if it doesn't really move properly, then it kind of stagnates and bacteria can grow as well. Um, eating a lot of carbohydrates can do it, and so can like large amounts of carbohydrates. And also um, food sensitivities can damage the gut and end up with bacteria arising from that as well. Um, there's a whole lot of other things I could go into. Um, but I just want to point out bacteria are not the bad guy. Um, we have, I can't remember the exact number, but recently I read that we are something like 90-ish percent, we have 90-ish percent bacterial DNA in our bodies, only like 10 percent, whatever the remainder is. Of human DNA so we are basically um, as I think it was Dr. Bruce Lipton has said we are basically a huge cloud of bacteria walking around um, so bacteria are awesome they create life they help us to live um, they help us to be individuals unique people and they create um, like I said nutrients that we need in our body so Bacteria are not the bad guy, it's just when they're in the wrong place or when there's the wrong kind of bacteria, that's when we need to, and we need some assistance. So anyway, I'm going to finish now. I don't know how long that was. I hope it was short. I'm sorry if it wasn't. Um, I'll come back maybe tomorrow or in the next couple of days and do another little short video with a little bit more info about SIBO and um, hopefully in a little while I'll have my results back and I'll be able to update everybody about what I'm going to do. Okay, so kia pai o koutou po, have a great night, and I'll see you again later. Bye!